Okay, let's talk some books. So today I'm just going to simply be going through what I am currently reading. And this is covering basically just the first week almost of April. So let's go ahead and get into it. I am still, of course, in the middle of reading The Arabian Nights, and I am still doing about 10 pages a day. I've skipped a day here or there. Like, I'm not too stressed about that. Um, I'm not worrying about like trying to finish this book in a certain amount of time, though at this pace, it looks like I'll probably finish this book in the month of May. And you can see I'm, it looks like about halfway through. Yeah, I guess I'm about halfway through the book. Um, and I'm still really enjoying this. And I've just finished a little sequence that I rather liked, but I'm now kind of going into a sequence that I'm not sure how I feel about it. There's parts of the story that I'm liking, other parts that I'm not. I'll give you an update on that next week, I think, because, um, yeah, I've, I've got to wait and see. But I have started um, annotating the book slightly differently, um, where I'm these top tabs here are basically the um, main overarching story that Shahrazad is um, talking about. And then followed by what are these orange tabs here are if someone within her story tells a story. And then these tabs right here that are sort of purplish blue looking. Um, they're purple for me. I don't know how that's going to show up on the camera. But these tabs here are if someone within her story has someone in their story who tells a story. So I'm just tracking the number of embedded narratives there are because it also helps me keep track of who's talking about who as we go from night to night to night. So that's what's going on in Arabian Nights. And this month, I am also going to be starting The Mysteries of Paris, which is a buddy read that I am doing with Stormy at Storm Reads. We are going to be attempting to read um, one chapter of this day, which will get us through um, about one book every month. This is divided into like 10 or 11 books. So um, we should finish this in just under a year. Um, in fact, we might even manage to squeeze in finishing this this year, but I don't know. We'll we'll have to see about that and how that goes. But either way, I'm really looking forward to this. Um, we're just a couple days into it at the point that I'm recording this, and it's going well so far. It has a very odd opening. The dialogue is a little bit cheesy, but there was a street fight. <laughs> so it was mainly the dialogue in the street fight that was kind of cheesy. So I'm hoping as the book continues that um, that gets worked out. And uh, thus far the characters are kind of interesting and there's definitely a lot of little moving pieces. We've been introduced to a couple of people who seem like they're going to be main characters um, and each of them seems to have a backstory that we're just about to start getting into. So um, this is going to be a long read but it's um, a very easy read. The translation is very easy, very smooth to read. Like I said at times, I don't know if it's the translation or how it was originally written, it comes across as a little on the cheesy side but we'll see how that ends up working out. And then the book that I'm probably looking forward to reading the most this month would be Lust for Life by Irving Stone. This is a biographical novel about Vincent van Gogh, as you can kind of see from the cover. I am doing this as a buddy read with Arianne from Book Zealots. And uh, yeah, this is a book that uh, I've, you can see, I've already started reading it. I've already made a decent way into it. It's a pretty quick read, and I will definitely be done with this Um by the end of the week that I'm in, <laughs> but I'll definitely be done with it by the next time I update you and I'll be able to share with you my thoughts on this. But so far, I've already learned things about Vincent van Gogh that I did not know. Like he was um, an evangelist for a while in a coal mining town. Um, and that's actually led me to wanting to read another book that I have about coal miners in Europe during the same time period. Um, but I'll get into that at a different time. Anyway, um, I'm really looking forward to reading more of this. I can already tell that he's trying to address multiple things that I feel like are widely known about Vincent van Gogh, like um, potential mental health issues or things that he was dealing with. Um, but he's doing it in a sort of roundabout way that I can kind of appreciate and feel like is fairly respectful to Vincent, but also addressing some of the other things um, that are going on in his life. So it'll be pretty interesting to see where this goes. And yeah, I can't wait. So an unplanned book that I have picked up to go with Lust for Life is The Complete Paintings of Vincent van Gogh. I have owned this book for a while. I am planning on using this book um, to sort of be a companion to Lust for Life. I've already noticed in there that he mentions the sketches that Vincent van Gogh is doing as he goes through his life, and it seems like he's going to be talking about his artwork as well. 
I'm hoping by name. Um, and so my goal and my hope is that I'm going to be able to use this beautiful book um, to go through and talk about and, and basically look at the paintings as he talks about them in the book. So that's what I'm hoping to use this for. But either way, like, I mean, who doesn't love <laughs> a good book? So we'll see how that goes um, and how well I'm able to match up what is mentioned in the biographical novel with what it is in the complete paintings book. That's basically all I'm currently reading. Um, and if you haven't noticed, I'm going to be through Vincent Van Gogh pretty soon and then I'm going to need another book to read. I guess I forgot to mention I am doing a uh, book club read with my family book club. We are doing Cassandra at the Wedding. In fact, now that I think about it, I have no idea where that book is right now. So I'll just put a picture of it up on the screen. Cassandra at the Wedding is a book that is basically talking about um, a young woman named Cassandra who is going back home to her family ranch for her twin sister's wedding. And Cassandra is not feeling very pleased about this wedding and is going there seemingly with the intent of sabotaging the wedding. At least that's what the back of the book says. Um, by this weekend, I will have read the first um, 50 pages of it. So by the time you've seen this, I guess, I will have read the first 50 pages of this book and um, we'll be seeing how that goes. Uh, I've read about 25 pages at this point and it's it's seeming pretty interesting. It's written very differently than I was expecting but um, yeah I don't know. I haven't read enough of it to really know. I am listening to it on audiobook and that seems to be going pretty well so I will probably continue doing that. The next book that I'm going to be reading is Peter Pan but this is also a very short book and will not take me probably more than a day to read. I'm thinking about listening to it on audiobook, so we'll see how that goes. Um, so once I'm done listening to the last 25 pages that I need to listen to in Cassandra at the Wedding, I'll probably listen to Peter Pan one day this weekend, or maybe just tomorrow, um, and then I'll be done. I do have other books on my TBR for April, Cloud Atlas, which is also a buddy read, and the other one being a long fatal love chase, which is... Um, basically my first barnacle buddy read, which is like a buddy read that I'm doing with all the viewers who were interested in reading along with me. I'm feeling a little fussy about my reading right now. And I'm realizing that I need to be doing something a little closer to mood reading. And I need to kind of change up what I'm doing outside of my sort of quote unquote required reading. And so what I ended up deciding to do was play another TBR game. So I'm going to do that now, um, and it's going to be pretty simple and straightforward, I hope, I think, maybe? <laughs> anyway, I'm not actually going to be playing my TBR game because my TBR game I'm finding the way I have it set up right now can be a little bit restrictive and also isn't super conducive to playing multiple times a month. So I reached out to Bailey at Is Bailey Reading. She has a fabulous TBR game. And I asked her if she would mind if I played it on my channel. And she said, sure, go ahead. So I have got a copy of it. And I will show you a picture of the board on the screen right now. And basically, it is a board game. She plays it with a physical board. I'm going to play it with this digital board. And um, it uses this board uh, that has just a whole bunch of prompts on it and a deck of cards. And I'm not going to go into all the details about how to play it. It's pretty straightforward and most of the rules for the deck of the cards are right there in the middle of the screen that you can see. Um, but if you want to know more about how specifically to play these games and to have somebody walk you through every single prompt, um, because this is Bailey's game, I'm going to direct you to her video and I will link that in the description below where she talks about all the rules to how she plays this game. I myself am only making one major adjustment to the game, and that has to do with the deck of cards. She uses a regular deck of playing cards. I have one regular deck of playing cards, but I'm not actually sure it's a full deck. Um, so I'm going to use my other deck of playing cards, which is going to make this game extra. <laughs> because it is, oh, it is heck a deck. Um, and this is a set of regular playing cards, but then there is another set of unusual playing cards in here mixed in with a couple of specialty cards. So it is literally just one gigantic deck of cards. So here's what the whole deck looks like. And you can see it's definitely more than your typical, what is it, 56 or something like that. And there are specialty cards. There are specialty suits like you can see here. And um, 
by and large, all the rules for the decks of deck of cards will still apply as Bailey has them laid out, but I've come up with some rules for the extra special cards that are in my deck, and I'll explain those as they come up or if they come up. So enough chitter chatter about that. Let's go ahead and get playing because I want to get back to reading. Since I'm using a digital version of this game, I will um, be using this little snail marker to move myself around the board. And I am just going to start him in the upper left hand corner of the board. Let's go ahead and start drawing. So draw number one of three gives me a zero. There is no zero in a regular deck of cards, but what I decided that a zero will mean is that I just move nowhere and I have to do the prompt probably in the future again that I'm already on. So in this case, I don't move anywhere. <laughs> the goal is to move all the way around the board and finish, you know, a lap around the board. So this isn't good progress for my first draw. Um, but that means I need to do a random number reread. Um, so I have about 26 books um, on my physical TBR that would be rereads for me. So I will just use a random number generator to pick that, but I'm going to hold off on doing that and I'll do that when I go and pick all the books after I finish drawing. My second draw gives me a three. Oh, great. <laughs> this, is, this is a very interesting start to the game. So if we go back to the board, you will see um, on the board that three says do all three prompts. So I need to do the next three prompts in a row. So I need to pick a book that will finish a series. I need to do a readathon, and I am going to change the rules slightly for that. So I'll explain that when I pick a book. And I need to choose a least popular book. So those are the next three prompts that I will be doing. And this is going to be interesting. My final draw is an H, which in a Hecadeck is a hunter, and you can see it is two suits on here. So what I've decided that will mean for this game is that I get to move two spaces, uh, but I need to combine the prompts on those two spaces. I'm starting at least popular, and moving two spaces has me pass new release and repeat author. So I need to read a book that has been published this year that is a repeat author. Um, and because I'm trying not to buy books, this needs to be a book on my shelf. Um, that's got to be tricky. I have no idea who that's going to be. So give me a minute to collect my thoughts and I will come back and show you what the books are that I will be reading for these prompts. Okay. So that definitely took more than its fair share of time, but let me go ahead and share with you the books that I ended up picking for those prompts. So for the first book, which had to be a random number reread, I used a random number generator and I'll show you where it started at. I'm pretty sure I have about 26 books on my bookshelves that are rereads for me. Um, and so I set it at that. And then I clicked it and here's what it gave me, which was the number nine. So the ninth book on my shelf, starting from basically the top of this shelf behind me, um, brought me to Mall Flanders. This is a book by Daniel Defoe. Um, and I was not expecting that to be the pick at all, but I read this book when I was in college and I recall really enjoying it. Ironically, I'm not sure if I'm in the mood for Mall Flanders right now, so we will see how that goes. Um, it's not a particularly long book. It's like 250 pages, something around that. There's a lot of end notes in it. I don't know how much of the notes I will read this time around because I did study it pretty thoroughly in college. And at this point, I just want to re-familiarize myself with the story as a whole and then go back and look at some of the more details maybe on another reread. Anyway, Mall Flanders is the first book that is on here. Next, I got a three, and so that meant I have to do the next three prompts, and the first one was to finish a series. I am currently not at the point in any series where I am close to finishing it, and I'm not going to take that prompt to mean that I need to binge through a series until I finish it, even if that is a duology. And I don't think there's even any duology that I'm in the middle of that I have the second book of. I'm not a big series person. So, in case you were worried that the unicorn would be out of the mix, it is not. Here she is. And per usual, I will be picking from in here a slip of paper that could have any book on my bookshelf in it. Or on it, rather. So, 
This is the pick. Let's see what's on here. Oh, okay. That's not such a bad pick. Effie Bruce. Um, let me go get that. It's gonna take me a second because it's on the shelf behind me underneath this chair or like behind the back of the chair. Anyway, that doesn't matter to you. It's only gonna take me a second and it will take you no time. Okay, I got it and here it is. This is by Fontaine or Fontaine. I'm not sure how you say the last name. I will learn that by the time I finish reading this book. And this is a German classic that is supposed to be similar um, to Madame Bovary. That is the book. So um, the story of this, I, I don't know much about other than that it's supposed to be similar to Madame Bovary, which is that book I know is supposed to be about a woman who is very discontent with her life and marriage and seeks excitement elsewhere, shall we? Um, and apparently this is supposed to be very similar. So I'm looking forward to reading this. I don't know much about it, but that intrigued me that it was a very similar storyline. Um, and I'm not sure like how close in timeline those two books were written. I do have Madame Bovary. Um, this is a short book, so it should be a pretty easy read to get through and I'm looking forward to it. Speaking of short books, the second prompt I had after that was that I needed to do a readathon. Now for Bailey, she is usually banking weeks so that she can participate in readathons. I'm going to just change this prompt to mean that anytime it comes up, I just need to choose a prompt from a readathon that is currently going on. So in the month of April, um, Paul at Reader's Retreat is hosting WrestleMania-thon, and I will click the announcement video that he made for that down in the description below. And yes, this is like old-fashioned like WWE like wrestling. Um, and so he has uh, prompts that are related to wrestlers going all the way back into the 60s, I think he said. And so uh, the prompt that I chose off that list, because it's a book that was already on my TBR, is the prompt that was for the shortest book or a short book. And I don't remember uh, what the wrestler's name was that was for this prompt, but I'll put it on the screen. Um, anyway, for a short book, I chose Peter Pan. As I mentioned, it was something I was already planning on reading this week. And now it fits into this TBR game as well. And the final prompt that I got for the number three was to read the least popular book or, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to just take that to mean a banned book or any book that is like unpopular, um, that kind of thing. I'm not going to do it by ratings because I use Storygraph and Storygraph will show you the ratings that um, readers have given books, but there's no way to filter or organize them in that way. So I can't choose the lowest rated book. And there is actually another prompt on this uh, game board that's for lowest rated. So I'm just going to choose a book that has been unpopular for some reason. So I ended up choosing A Long Fatal Love Chase, partially because I'm already planning on reading this this week, but also because I know this was a book that at the time Louisa May Alcott submitted it to be published was her least popular work according to the publishers. Um, they did not want to publish this book. They didn't think it would sell well. They didn't think it would be popular. And I also feel like it's still one of her lesser known works. So I don't know if it's her least popular work, but it was something that was... Um, that wasn't even published until after she passed away. So I'm going to count this as my least popular book, which is good because it will definitely be read before my next um, video update, I think. Anyway, I'm not going to try and figure out that crazy calendar posting schedule. So this will go on as well. And then finally, I had a hunter and I needed to combine two prompts and it was the next two prompts, which were a new release and a repeat author. I thought this was going to be a little harder than it was, but it actually worked out well. So I used Storygraph, which is a book reading app in case you didn't know. And I filtered my physical TBR list on there by books that I owned and publication date. And then I just scrolled through them until it showed me a book that I owned that was most recently published by an author that I know I've read before. And I was very surprised by what the book was. I was not expecting this. And it turned out that it was Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver. This has been a book that I have been anticipating reading for basically since it came out. It's supposed to be a coming of age story, but it features a redheaded boy who's growing up in Appalachia and kind of does, you know, his coming of age story. But it's supposed to have, you know, similar amounts of zany characters, a lot of di dialect in there, just like David Copperfield did. Um, there are some people who really love uh, this book. It's been, I feel like, read by every celebrity and 
has won lots of prizes, been acknowledged. Like, I mean, it's probably overhyped at this point, let's be honest. Um, there are also people who really don't like this book. And I feel like maybe it's been too hyped for me. That at this point, I feel like I'm far enough out that some of the hype has died down. So we'll see whether or not I like this. But this is the third and final draw pick that I got. And I'm just happy that I was able to uh, make those two prompts work out because I was really worried they were going to end up with I don't even know what. So once I am done with the books, more or less so that we're on that other TBR list that I made for April, I will be moving into reading these books. So we'll see how all that goes. This is a really fun game to play. Um, Bailey does have it as a PDF um, on one of her videos. So if you want to, you know, download it, I'm sure that's why she has it there and play it for yourself um you know for your own use i'm sure she doesn't mind that uh but again i did ask her permission to pay, play it on my channel and you can see the full directions by seeing her um video and feel free to like and subscribe her channel like she um does the game slightly differently than i do and uh, makes videos based solely around playing this game and i think it's really neat how she does it so let me know what you are currently reading and i will talk to you next time bye